All right, back again. Hey, you never left. You've been with me all morning long. All morning long. Back again. You never left. You've been with me all morning long. Hey, this is the hour number three of the three peak. Hour number three of the three peak. Can you handle this? The CD that we are, you know, we are repping very, very vigorously by Janelle Gray. Handle this. My daughter, Janelle Gray, pick that up on CD, baby. But you know what? You can pick me up right now on FBRN.us. You can also pick me up on Roku. That's right, Roku, Viz TV. And obviously you're looking right now on Facebook Live. But also check us out on Twitter, EdGray1906. And also on Instagram, EdGray1906. You see a pattern. But also what you see is a pattern right now that we all need to follow. That's called voting. February 14th, voting. February 14th, fall in love. Fall in love with democracy. Go ahead and get the vote out. February 14th is the beginning of early voting. And today we're with uh, Marcus Turner, Jr., who's running for Dallas County Clerk. Make Marcus your choice. Marcus, how you yes, doing, sir, man? man? Pretty good. Just so excited to be in the, in the, uh, in the house today, like we say. Uh, I'm doing great. How about you? I'm doing okay. I'm doing okay. You know, I am... I, you know, you got me blushing, man. Men okay. don't have me blush. <laughs> okay, I'm going to just say that right now. Okay. But dang, man, you came on the show. You said, man, I, I finally got here. I finally mm -hmm. got here. And I'm yeah. going like, wow, man. Like, wow. The only other person that told me that mm -hmm. before, and I know you got his drop right now, Angelo. And I know the people out there, when I say Angelo like that, you know, I said the champ is here. That's Muhammad Ali. And in Muhammad Ali's corner, there was always Angelo. Angelo Dundee, but I have Angelo. My dude Angelo here is running control, but I know you have Angelo. I know you have the war drop, you know, with Howard Scott. Howard Scott, the war, told me that when he first got here, and we'll play that drop. And you'll hear some of that music. But making Marcus your choice, new leadership for a better Dallas County. Marcus, tell us about yourself. Man, I'm uh, Marcus Turner from Desoto, Texas. Uh, born and raised in Dallas. Grew up in Desoto ISD. Graduated from the great David W. Carter. Whoa, whoa, I think whoa, whoa, you may whoa, know whoa, something whoa, about whoa, that. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Wait, hold on, let me get back. <laughs> okay, yeah, get get yeah, right. Man, Let's get right. Man, you didn't tell me that, man. You ain't gonna tell me that. You graduated from where? David W. Carter. The great David W. Carter. Yes, sir. Okay, all right, keep going. Um, <laughs> so after that, uh, I went to, uh, I guess you could say, to a few colleges, junior colleges. I played baseball. But I ended up going uh, where I was compelled to go because I got a full scholarship to the Jarvis Christian College okay. in Hawkins, Texas, where I got my Bachelor's of Business Administration with a minor in Business Management. And then uh, from there, I went straight to Dallas County, uh, to the Dallas County Elections Department. And that's where I kicked off my uh, career at Dallas County. And uh, ever since then, it's just been I, I, what I feel like magic uh, at Dallas County. I feel like it's been a calling for me to serve the citizens of Dallas County for the last eight years in different departments. So elections department, that's where you at? What did you do in the elections department? Well, that's where I started. That's where you started? Yeah, What'd so when I first started at the elections department, I was in the elections warehouse, just basically getting paperwork ready in the elections warehouse, uh, working on machines, making sure the election day equipment was still, uh, I guess you could say, ready for election day, ready to go, and we delivered the equipment. Then four months into it, I got transferred down to the elections department that was on in the old HHS building. I got a promotion, and I was the full-time courier. That was around, like, 2014. Yeah. So I did that about one or two years. Okay. Yeah. Now, you, what year did you graduate from college? I'm just looking at you. I'm going, like, yeah. I'm an old man. And like, well, look, I'm, I feel like I'm a little old, too. But I graduated uh, last year. Last year. Yeah, I had a bachelor's. I graduated last year while I was working at Dallas County. So I was taking, for the last two years, I was taking 15 hours a semester. 15 hours a semester. 15 hours a semester. What's the full load? Uh, 12. 12. Man. Okay. Yeah. So, so I, I, you know, I remember. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, see, it exactly. wasn't that long ago. Yeah, it wasn't that long. It's 12. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, so 15. So you're taking more than, than. I was taking more because I, I was on a mission. I challenged myself to a two year plan mm -hmm. because what I felt was I knew I had the competence. I was learning things in Dallas County. I've been through different departments. But I was like, what can I do to get promotion? Now, 
my my dad shout out to him Marcus Turner Senior. Right, that's I, what I was saying. I went to yeah. college high school, but I I, I, I figured it out. <laughs> Marcus Turner, Turner Junior. That means you, it has to be a senior. senior yeah. Right. He, he will always tell me promotion comes from God. But see, what we have to realize is we got to put in work. So mm-hmm. I was working full time down at the Dallas County Civil Foul Desk, but I was also taking fifteen hours. I was really motivated uh, to uh, get a promotion, whether that be internally or be where I am right now, just running for county clerk. When, honestly, I, I didn't even think of this uh, until probably about six months ago. You didn't think about running for county clerk? Oh, no, I wouldn't even think. I knew that I would eventually run, but I, I wasn't thinking about county clerk. That's, a, that's interesting on that because I see similarities between you and I mm-hmm. because, uh, well, that's I took a full load, too. Well, not a full load if you would consider being six hours a full load. Mm-hmm. We're working full time. But I, I, when I started school uh, at El Central and then further did studies at SMU, I didn't mm-hmm. take a month off from 1985 wow. until 1990. So I was consistently in school. Mm-hmm. May inter term, I was there. Yes. Yeah, you guys don't you don't know about it. they they have like spring, <laughs> yep. fall, yep. and even before you get to summer, they have May in a term. Yep, that's a trip, ain't it? I know you're going like what? I never heard of that. Not only do you have summer school, yes. I'm looking at the camera right there. It's summer school. Mm-hmm. You have May in a term, and you also have January too. But nevertheless, I would, I would take January. You took January, and just to let you know how many you was on the same page. Once I graduated. I jumped right into my graduate program. So I'm currently at the University of North Texas at Dallas studying public leadership. Okay. And so and I'm taking extra. So a full load in uh, graduate school is six hours. So I'm taking nine hours a semester. That's what I did too. That's what currently that's what I'm still doing, pursuing a doctorate. So the master's degree, Congrats I took a full that. load yes. doing that as well. Wow. So you like to read, obviously. Yes. Okay. I, lo- I love to read. I love to write. And I love to talk. Well, you love to read, write, talk. Let's, we're going to do a little bit of that. We ain't going to okay. do too much uh, writing here, but we're going to do some reading and talking as well. Okay. So we're looking here, magistrate, court, yes, clerk, uh, Lou Sterrett, jail. Uh, what, what do you do there? Oh, man. That was what I call an introduction to the Dallas County District Clerk's Office. When you work at a, uh, a magistrate as a court clerk, you are duly deputized. What that means is you are deputized to do uh, in the words of our district clerk, district clerk work and county clerk work. Because you're a district clerk employee, but you're housed in the jail. So basically what we did is we ran national checks. We wanted a few clerks that work as essential uh, personnel around the clock. So we are uh, running national checks on inmates who come into jail or people who are getting charged with crimes to see if they had trips. We're preparing these this information to give to the magistrate court so they can issue uh, bonds and let the uh, the inmates know of what charges they're being charged with. We do that. We file white warrants. Um, we also we would have to report things to the news, you know, which is is coming up to be something very important. Speaking on confidential information, so it was a 24-hour operation. I had the one through 11 shift. It was the good four days on, three days off. I loved it. Why did you love it? I loved it because. I just love to be able to serve on that level. That experience that I gained being in the Loose Derrick Jail, I, I, I wouldn't trade it for anything. I mean, just the experience that of going through the jail and, and seeing how you know the inmates are housed and seeing how the DSOs and the Sheriff's Department work the jail, seeing how we played the, a part in the jail as court clerks, uh, I just wouldn't trade that for anything. You know, I, I uh, went to Loose Derrick uh, to do a mentoring program, and it seemed like any time I went down to the mentoring program until they got the chance to know me, mm-hmm. you, you know, as soon as you walk through there, it's like, man, it's like you in jail, and I'm going like, you actually love going to jail, and I'm going like, I was just mentoring down there. Yes. And I'm going like, man, wait a minute, something about when those bars closed, boom. Mm-hmm. But how, how I looked at it is, I wanted to be that hope. I wanted to serve and be seen as somebody who uh, was there to serve and not to judge. It was times where I could I could basically say, so in our role as court clerks, we would have to give the charges to the uh, DSOs, which is the detention officers, to take it to the um, the inmates. 
Sometimes, you know, the DSOs may be gone. When I got on what All I right, started. You speak an acronym. I'm I sorry. mean, I'm, 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 okay. I'm, I'm sorry. I went to Carter, but I'm, I don't speak acronym. <laughs> Okay. So what's the acronym? What is DSO? What does that mean? Uh, detention service officer. There you go. I mean, you know, folks going like that when they they, they talking they, 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 with DSO. DSO. <laughs> unless so, you obviously unless you listen and you say you've been to loose Sterrett and you say I already know what that is. Yeah. But go ahead, please proceed. Yeah, and so I just seen little gaps where I can serve just a little better, be a little more transparent, be seen a little more as that serving leader. So what I would do is once I once the magistrate gave us the charges. And uh, if the DSO or the detention service officer wasn't there, here I go. I would walk through the whole jail and go find that inmate. Hey, be buzzed back and take it to him. Let him know, you know, everything's on there. And, and then, you know, I would just serve in that capacity. So I didn't like to pass the, the load on. Sometimes I would like to just be the middle man myself. So when you talk to the inmates, what did you get from them? Uh, just basically just letting them know, hey, this is, you know, basically, you know, what the judge gave you, this is your paperwork to keep. Um, and if they had questions, you know, I would try to answer their questions, but obviously being a clerk, you can't answer legal questions. Right. But just basically letting them know. Oftentimes, when you see inmates in jail, it's a mistrust. And so when you see, when they may see a DSO or they may see a sheriff, they may think like, yeah, give me that. Like, you, you part of why I'm here. But when they see me coming in and I would give it to them, it was like, all right, like, Okay. You know, you, you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I, I'm I'm looking at your experience in education. This is on the uh, uh, this is on your push card. Let's put the push card out there so everyone can see. It. I think we have front and back, yeah. so we can go ahead and look at the push card so they can see what we uh, what we're working with and who we're talking to yes, as well. And then uh, after we go go to uh, a break, we'll come back and talk a little bit more. Uh, I'm looking at experience in education here. Uh, civil and family courts filed desk intake clerk. Uh, so you've done a, well, obviously a lot of clerical work, and you're running for uh, Dallas County clerk. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So bachelor's of business administration, mm -hmm. and at Jarvis Christian College, and yes, we're gonna sir. answer this question, and then we'll go to break. Okay. Okay. At Jarvis Christian College, that's the HBCU. Yes, sir. Hawkins University. Yeah. Uh, Hawkins, Texas. Yeah. Yeah. So Hawkins, uh, Texas, rather. Mm -hmm. uh, Tell us about your, your experience there. My, that, it was a game-changing experience. Um, I had never been to HBCU, though I wanted to go. When I first got down to the HBCU, what I, known, what I noticed was the home-like environment with professors, with administration, with staff, with coaches, with people pulling you in. It was this pool that said, hey, you are home. You're supposed to be here. But while you're here, you're going to get an education. You're going to learn. You're going to get uh, indoctrinated in this culture of the HBCU, and you're going to gain respect. And that's what I what I did at Jarvis Christian College, and it allowed me to be able to serve on a level that I'm serving on now, just seeing how they were dedicated to serving us as uh, students at that college. All right. So what do you think about the, uh, the recent uh, – well, recent threats against the HBCU. Man, it's, you know what, it's, um, okay, how do I want to answer this? I, I think it's, it's reminiscent. Uh, it's history. When, when you look at history in, in, in the United States, one thing we can't do is forget. And so when, when you think of threats on HBCUs, you got to look into why. Why would it be a threat on, into HBCUs? What is the threat? And when you hear about what the threat is, you just know, okay, it's history just repeating itself over and over. But we can overcome because, like, LBJ and Dr. King, we shall overcome and we will. You know, a threat is just a threat. But we really taking the steps, you know, to move our culture forward, move our society forward. And these idle threats, you know, they just nothing more than baseless, you know. I feel, yeah, I feel like we ready for it, you know, uh, to move forward as a society. Okay. Yeah. You're listening to the Commish Radio Show. Hey, and we're going to move forward. There's nothing idle about what we're doing. We're always constantly moving forward because guess what? If you're standing still, well, you're really going backwards because everybody else is moving forward. We just have to be two steps ahead. No, possibly three steps because you know our haters are really ready to push us back too. We'll be back, Commish Radio Show.
Scott from the Howard Scott Show. Coming to you from beautiful Arlington, Texas on Fishbowl Radio. You can catch me every Wednesday from 6 to 7. And we play all this war music. And you get to hear some of the songs that I wrote when I was in the band War. How I created the songs, the stories behind it. And we start off with the blues. You have a good time talking to me. So tune in every Wednesday from 6 to 7 and catch the Howard Scott Show. We're having a whole lot of fun on Fishbowl Radio. Jump in. This is John Cruzeau, your Democratic candidate for District Attorney for Dallas County. Thank you to the Commish and Ed Gray and the Commish Radio Show. Hey, my name is Sammy G. I'm the host of The Interview Show, and I invite you to jump in every Tuesday from 2 to 3 p.m. Central Standard Time. You'll hear great interviews from amazing music artists, authors, entrepreneurs, coaches, and more. That's 2 to 3 p.m. Central Standard Time on Tuesday. We'll see you there. On FishbowlRadioNetwork.com. Jump in. Podcasters, the name of the game is to get more visibility for your podcast so you can gain more credibility with your audience, thus more profitability. If you're ready to start syndicating your podcast and massively grow your audience and influence, then contact Fishbowl Radio Network today at 817-633-4880. Fishbowl Radio Network is one of the largest streaming platforms in the world. And now your podcast can be heard all over the world by the listening audience that Fishbowl Radio Network 
artwork has amassed over the last 11 years. With over 6 million impressions a month and growing, this is a platform that all podcasters should be on to create greater visibility for their podcast. Jump in today and be a part of the Fishbowl family, streaming great live internet radio shows and podcasts 24-7-817-633-4880. Jump in. This is Marquise Hawkins, candidate for House District 100, and you're listening to The Commission Radio with Ed Gray. All right, Commission Radio Show back again. We appreciate you for listening in. You've been listening to, well, Handle This by uh, Janelle Gray. Pick it up on CD, baby. Also, uh, holler at me. Holler at your boy. You know, I'm here. You know, uh, so, uh, you know, I, I got... Uh, I may even give you a discount or something. I think you you picked up a CD, right? You got it. Yeah, I got one. I, mine is right here. I'm yeah. so glad to be able to pop it in. Yeah, you got a you got a discount too. You yeah. I, see what what happened was what happened was I got okay. the Carter <laughs> Cowboy see, discount. You know, it's okay. that's my hood. <laughs> yeah. See. So we went back. You know, we went back to that. He said, "What happened was what he happened was." What happened was. He said, was, W-U-Z. Z, obviously. <laughs> was, <Yep>. right? <laughs> what happened was, yeah. you know, that's it. So what happened was that we were talking yes. about, uh, uh, we were talking about experience in education, and, and uh, I want to go ahead and, and, and run through your affiliations. We had posted up during the break with... Uh, posted up, uh, uh, well, your your push card. You've you been you've been walking. You've been doing. Yes, I've been literally everywhere. I don't really feel like well, it's a few places in Dallas County I haven't been yet, but the majority of the cities and size of Dallas County I've been in with well, those push cards. Well, I appreciate you for coming on the show here because we we scheduled this one. It's like, hey, can you come on? And you say, yeah, I'll be there. I'll be there. I yeah. can't miss it. Yeah, I'll be there. So. <laughs> Uh, I, I hopefully you've had a, a good time here. We're just kicking it. That's the way we do the show. We're just kicking it. Yes, uh, tell me about Pull Up and Vote. What, what, what is that? So Pull Up and Vote, what I did is I partnered, uh, what was that, two or three years ago with uh, two of my play cousins. Now, you may know how this goes sometime. Wait, in wait, you already you already lost some people because they don't know okay. what play cousins is. So I was going to break it down. So okay, in the black please, community, please. now there it could be in yeah. other communities. I mean, this is a learning experience. It's a learning people, experience. I understand. In the in the black community, mm-hmm. you may grow up with your parents' best friends' kids, and if your parents' best friend kids, they when you grew up together, you played with them. Y'all drunk water from the water hose outside. Y'all played throw up tackle, and guess what? They grew up to be not your parents' best friend friends. They were your play, play cousins. cousins. Okay. Yeah. So were your play? Okay, we got it down. So my play cousins, right. Gabrielle Dunn, Cornish, and um, Tam Watts. We came together and we decided that we would found a group that would have a pull up and vote. This, what we did is we targeted East Dallas and we said we want to engage voters in East Dallas and all over Dallas County to come register and vote because we were in the midst of an election that felt like at the time we had to have our hands on deck so people can voice their you know opinions at the polls. So what we did is we partnered with a couple groups, uh, Melanin Man Festival. We partnered with uh, Constable Bill Gibson. I seen him on the show earlier. Mm-hmm. Jasmine Crockett, she came through. And they spoke, and we spoke about, you know, different things. We also had Sean from the Urban League, the president now of the Urban League, come through and, you know, just educate voters and get them registered to vote. And so that's basically what the pull-up and vote was, where we were engaged in the community and really just trying to be a resource as it pertained to voting. So how long has this been going on? Well, we did the first annual one, uh, what was that, like two or three years ago? Um, unfortunately, at the time, I kind of parted ways with the group because I knew I would run and we didn't want to present any conflict of interest. So I, I went ahead and parted ways, but they may have uh, one coming up. You never know. Okay. We want you, uh, hey, I want to talk again to the folks out there. Mm-hmm. Uh, Facebook sometimes shadow ban, so please share this. We encourage everyone to share our. Uh, well, our feeds on Facebook. You can also catch our feeds on YouTube, and you'll also be able to catch it on this TV uh, on Roku as well. So, uh, DFW Metro NAACP Legal Redress. Yes, sir. Team. Yes, I am a lead. Oh well, okay, I saw that at the DFW lead. So yeah. What is the difference between lead and everybody else? So basically, what I'm doing is, is I work with an attorney and the president at the particular branch, DFW Metro, NAACP. Where's the DFW Metro at? It, 
I think it's in you got three counties. So you got Dallas County, Collin County, and parts of Turner County. Okay. And so what we do is uh with the legal redress, we take in complaints. We, you know, kind of like scan the external environment to see if we're needed. And we just try to engage the citizens and let them know that we're here. It's a fairly new branch, but I'm just so excited to be able to. How long has the branch been in in effect? I think, let's see, maybe a year, a year. And I came aboard like at the six month mark and we've been doing some great work. Uh, One thing, if I may mention, during the pandemic, we partnered with uh, Judge Mike Jones, and uh, Judge Sasha Moreno, we partnered also with the Dallas County, I'm sorry, the Dallas Eviction Advocacy Center and uh, other resources to bring together a eviction panel. Now, what this did was provide the community with resources because the Eviction Advocacy Center will represent people for free against their evictions. And then also you had two justices of the pieces who are there who are talking through the matters and telling them, you know, kind of like how they look at these cases. So that's what we're looking to to do with the DFW Metro NAACP is be a resource to the community, all communities, but especially the underserved communities. Member of Dallas County Peace Officers Association. Yes. So I was an active member at Dallas County of the Dallas County Peace Officers Association. What is the Peace Officers Association? It's like the Police Officers Association of Dallas County. And so with my mother being in law enforcement for, I think now 32, 33 years. What did she do? Uh, she was uh, climbed the ranks at the Sheriff's Department all the way up to Lieutenant in Administration. Then she went over to Constable Gibson's office to be the chief. So she's the chief at Constable uh, Bill Gibson's office in Precinct 2. And uh, also my uncle, um, well, two of them. One that you may know, Ed Wright, he was on here. Uh, that's my uncle. He my play uncle. You see what I'm oh, saying? You okay. see how I come okay. full circle? Because <laughs> I, was, I was about to do the yeah. turner, and I was like, right, right how do we yeah. come up with that? It's play uncle. Hey, that's play uncle. But okay. honestly, it is, it's, it's blood. It's blood between me and Ed Wright, but, you know, we had to figure it out. You know, we got to go on down the line and figure it out, but... You know, just having that heavy law enforcement presence, obviously being in a loose area, I wanted my voice to kind of be representative. And I did financially bag them as well. I just wanted to uh, be engaged with the Dallas County Peace Officers Association. Okay. Peace Officers Association. Yes, sir. All right, so now let, let's go ahead and talk about the the uh, Dallas County Clerk's Office. Okay. Okay, you're, you're running against a guy that's been there for years now. Mm-hmm. Uh, what pathway to victory you think uh, do you have? Well, um, the pathway to victory. So what I'm thinking is just engaging the citizens. Uh, you can, we can look at things kind of like, if I can compare it to the Bible, we can look at things and we can see Goliath. And, you know, Goliath is hollering not to say that's what the incumbent is doing. But you like, wow, this guy is huge. This guy is big time. There's no, everybody's looking around and nobody can beat him. And then you go out. And you survey the community. Now you said now you you, now you 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 compared them to what now? Goliath. That's what I thought you did. Three or four terms, I think. Okay. Uh, since 2006, that's when I graduated high school. And so, uh, when you go to the community and you ask people simple questions like, "Hey, do you know where to go and file a DBA?" and people have no clue. And then you tell them you're running for county clerk, and they say, "Well, who is the current county clerk?" Or they ask, "What does the county clerk do?" You know, this could be an education <laughs> session. This session right here, I can gain a voter if I just give them the information because the reality of the situation, we have two, three million people in Dallas, Dallas County. And so when they go into the polls, every two or three million people are not voting and have not voted at the polls. So we have potential to reach new voters every time we go out. And that's my pathway. Engaging the voters in Dixon Circle. Engaging the voters in Oak Cliff, DeSoto. Dixon Circle. Dixon Circle, where my parents are from. Yeah, so they from Dixon Circle? Oh, yes. Wolfslager? Um, see, you lost me with that one. I'm from yeah, DeSoto. Yeah, from <laughs> you yeah, lost see, me with I, that one. I, I went to Dixon Circle on you, Okay, man. yeah, you did. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I just yeah. know, hey, Larry Johnson, yeah, and that's yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, I, I, I throw that out on people. They go like, wait, well, you know, hey. Yeah. Man. I did that to a guy once. He was talking about you from West Dallas. I said, what side bricks and sticks? Oh, man. You know, so, hey, you know, you got to be from around the way to know these kind of things. Yes. So uh, the county clerk's position, what does what the county clerk actually do? The county clerk is the custodian of records. Uh, also, uh, the um, the exclusive member of commissioner court, which means that if it's tied, the county clerk will, you know, then be the deciding vote. You well, also, of, of what? The, the commissioner's court. Really? 
Yes. Also houses the records of the probate court, the misdemeanor courts. You can go to the county clerk's office to file a DBA. You can go to the county clerk's office to get vital records, death certificates, birth certificates, marriage licenses. But when I become the next county clerk, we will also be the liaisons between the courts and the community. And we'll engage the community like never seen before. And that's what I'm running my platform on. We're going to do everything that uh, the incumbent has already uh, put in place, but we're going to go and achieve and do more. We're going to engage the community. We're going to get the information out there, and we're going to try to go through all cities in Dallas County to make sure that all the constituents in Dallas County are served to the highest honor. Now, during the break time, mm -hmm. you had talked about the county clerk, and no normally politicians come in. Well, I hate to call you one, but you, you run for office, you're a politician. Yep. But, you know, uh, you didn't have anything negative to say about him at yeah. all, which I'd never encourage anyone to say anything. Mm -hmm. But you you said you wanted to do everything he did, but but go one step further. But go further. I think Jay Z said it on a song. Go further. Go farther. If not, if that's not why we came, then why bother? Uh, what he meant by that is when he when he was surveying the atmosphere and he seen, okay, this guy's done good, but we've all heard the rumors internally. Oh, this may be this person's last term. So why not go ahead and put your name in the hat? Especially when I'm investing in public leadership right now at University of North Texas. Especially when I graduated with business management and business administration. Especially when I've worked the courts for the last 10 years and I can see myself maximizing this position all over Dallas County. Being the eighth largest city in the United States, I can see us being the leader and taking the torch and running forward. So running forward with this, I'm, I'm going to ask you about this present election that you're doing, and you you obviously out block walking and things of of, of that. You're doing poli typical uh, politician uh, knocking on doors. How how has the pandemic affected your campaign? Uh, it hasn't. It hasn't. I try not to let this pandemic be an excuse. And truth be told, that's one of the reasons why I'm running. Uh, during the pandemic, when we surveyed certain offices. What we started to see was, in the county clerk's office, a lot of those offices shut down and left. But we all know when you're a government agency, that's just not the right thing to do. We've seen similar, what I can compare it to, not on a large scale, but just very small, is Katrina. We wanted, when Hurricane Katrina happened, we needed resources. We needed to have access to, you know, all type of things. And so when these crises hits, like the pandemic, we don't want to leave. We want to look at crises like opportunity to serve at a larger scale. And so that's basically the platform I'm running on is serving the community uh, in spite of. So I haven't let this pandemic slow my uh, campaign down. I, like I said, I've been in all of these communities from Hamilton Park, South Dallas, Richardson, Far North Dallas, um, Highland Park, DeSoto, Cedar Hill. I've been all over Siegelville letting people know about this campaign and let them know that even during the pandemic, I will be seen and will be transparent. All right. We, uh, we're we going to take a quick break, but before we take a quick break, uh, I want to uh, look at, again, your affiliations. And you had mentioned earlier, you had mentioned uh, about the David and Goliath. Mm -hmm. uh, it seems like you were raised in the Church of God and Christ. Uh, that's listed here as well. Tell us about, uh, great, give a shout out to your church of God. I'm going to pretend like I'm on KHVN again. Man, look, I got I to gotta give so many shout outs if I go there. I give. I got to give a shout out to Abundant Life Church of God in Christ, uh, where the majority of my family goes. Obviously, my home church, which is Greater Harvest Church of God in Christ on Sunnyville and Overton Road. For my Oak Cliff people, we know that's almost in the heart of Oak Cliff. Uh, uh, a shout out to Mount Sinai Church of God in Christ where my closest friends go that's on Camp Wisdom and now uh, I'm a member of Grove Temple Church of God in Christ which is in Waxahachie, Texas alright, Waxahachie, Texas yes all sir right. All right. hey, you're a Kojic kid yes sir all right. so for all those people that are Kojic kids I want to go ahead and give you a shout out as well and uh, speaking of uh, Kojic I would uh, love to say that uh, my mother who God rest her soul uh, she would uh, get on me right now if I didn't give a shout out to Trinity Temple, Church of God and Christ. There you go. Bishop <laughs> Ransom over at Trinity Temple and Life Temple, Church of God and Christ as well. So, uh, hey, we'll be right back. Commission Radio Show.
Hey, how you doing? This is Ed Gray of the Commish Radio Show. Stay tuned and tune in and be up to speed on everything in social justice, human rights, and politics on the Commish Radio Show, airing every Saturday, 5 p.m. on the Fishbowl Radio Network. Jump in. Hi, my name is Gail Todd with Townview Realtors. If you find yourself in the market to buy, sell, lease, or maybe you want to be a part of this hot real estate market by investing, just give my team of professionals and I a call at 214-675-9572. Again, that's 214-675-9572. Or you can email me at gtod88 at yahoo.com. With me... It's all about you. Who was that masked man? You mean you don't know? That was no masked man. That was the commish. Saturdays from 5 to 6 p.m. on the Fishbowl Radio Network. Commish Radio Show back again. You know, we are playing the drops that we have on the Commish Radio Show. If you can contact me through eegray 62 at att.net we will play your drops we will play your drops because we are also starting our community champion hour which was formerly on heaven 97 uh we will be doing that here in the we talked already me and angelo had talked already about uh doing some shows here for a luncheon so you know stay tuned for that we, we're just going to sneak that in on you but right now but we are not going to sneak in with you Marcus Turner, who's run, Marcus Turner Jr., yes, sir. who's running for Dallas County Clerk. Uh, we had spoke uh, during the last break. We had uh, talked about the Church of God in Christ. We, Oak Cliff style, David W. Carter High School. We yes, also sir. talk about play cousins and all that. <laughs> so you know this is real down home, man, yes. with us, man. I, I really do appreciate you coming on this show, man. Yeah. I, I really do appreciate you coming on this show. I appreciate you inviting me. Uh, I appreciate, honestly, you providing this platform, which I was watching way before I even had a thought of running an election or running a campaign to be elected uh, to Dallas County seat. So I appreciate the platform and, and wish you a continued success. Well, I thank you. Now, you have new leadership for a better Dallas County. You mentioned Jasmine Crockett, who's running for Congress right now. Uh -huh. And... Uh, this is like a new a change of the guard, if you will. Oh, yes. New leadership. You mentioned about John Warren, who's the, uh, the current uh, Dallas County clerk. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think there should be a change of guard now? Uh, I think now is a good time, um, especially in, in my case. I'm willing and I'm ready. Uh, I'm educated. I'm experienced. And uh, I'm looking to lead Dallas County into the future. Um, I think that it is time for a change of guard, as you see in District 30, it's coming. You never know when it'll come. You never know um, when the right time is. But what we do have the power to do is to march down to the polls and make a change. And I think that I'm that right change right now. And I can tell you why. If you see me, I'm challenging you now. If you see me in the grocery store, if you see me in your city, ask me what changes I'm gonna make and I'll tell you, uh, I'll t articulate my vision to you. Have you guys had any uh, debates or information sessions? Yeah, so we had a debate, uh, a few of them. We had one uh, at the Dallas Examiner. That's, probably, that's the one that everybody calls me every day or texts me every day and tells me, hey, I watched this debate. Man, what, what a great debate. So I'm encouraging everybody to watch the Dallas Examiner debate. That was a good debate. Also, the Big East, which was last week. That was a great debate, too. Got a lot of good feedback from that one. Uh, man, we didn't have so many at this point. Uh, I'm just looking forward to the next one, even though it may not be one. Um, I, I'm just encouraged from the feedback that I've been getting from these debates. Well, how many hours of sleep are you getting during this this time? Last night, yeah, I got four. Four. Yeah, I, I was telling my uncle the other day. Um, Which one, your real uncle or your play one? No, nah, this the real uncle. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? No, nah, this the play one too, but it's play real, right? <laughs> okay. Go I was ahead. I was telling him, man, like. It gets to midnight, one or two in the morning, and I'm just thinking of ways. I'm thinking of ways to separate myself from the competition, thinking of ways to tell, articulate my vision to the constituents of Dallas County, thinking of ways where people will go into that poll 
and go all the way down that ballot and say, that's who I was looking for, Marcus Turner Jr., for my next county clerk. That's what that's what keeps me up at night. So last night I got four hours of sleep. And, uh, hey. Now, how old are you? 33. 33. Yes, sir. 33. I remember I was 33 for a whole year. Uh, <laughs> when I was 33, uh, 33, I was running for office myself. And, and people always would say, you're a young man. That's why I'm looking at you like this. I'm saying you're a young man. Yes. You, you're doing something that most young folk, 33, 32 years old, don't do. Yes. So you, you really want this job bad. You, yeah. And what, what I'm going to tell you is very interesting. When I first started in 2012, I worked for the elections department, which I mentioned. I was in the elections department looking over policy. The, the administrator was Tony, Tony Pippen's pool at the time. I was going into her office telling her, this is the things we can change. Kathy Glenn, I was going to her, which was my direct science, uh, supervisor. These are the things that I'm hearing in the community. This is the things we can change. This is going on in the house. How can we change it? And uh, I thought my supervisor at the time hated me, hated me. So when it was time for me to go to the district clerk's office, I'll never forget this. I left. She inboxed me on LinkedIn and told me, when you decide to run for office, I'm going to help you with your campaign. I was completely shocked. Now, how do you get people to help you on your campaign? Um, easy. I tell people simply by sharing a, a show like this. When you see a show, sir, uh, I got over, I think, 160-some signs all throughout Dallas County. Um, so just asking for a sign to be put in your yard. Uh, texting two or three people and telling them vote all the way down the ballot. And when you go in there, look for my name. This uh, position is important. Those are the simple ways that you can share uh, or you can help and volunteer with this campaign. And obviously the biggest way is um, uh, going into the polls yourself and select the Marcus Turner Jr. to be your next county clerk in Dallas now, How county. many people are running for Dallas county clerk? Right now, three. Three? Yes. So it's me, uh, a lady named Ann Cruz, and uh, John Warren. So three people are running for that. Where are you at on the on the ballot? It's only one number one. <laughs> <laughs> I hate to break, break it to you, Ed. It's, it's only one number one on the ballot, and that's Marcus Turner Jr. So I'm the first name on the ballot. There's no need to go any further than that. <laughs> don't look any further. Don't, don't look any further. Dennis Edwards on me now. Okay. And I want to so, challenge people to go to my platform, www.marcusturnerjr.com. Okay, so that's where we can find it on there? Yes, sir. Go and see if you align with my morals, beliefs, uh, how I want to serve you. And once I'm confident, once you see that, once you see my social media, the things that I've been doing in the community, that when you get to my name on the ballot, there will be no need to go any further. Man, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at your, 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 your push cards and everything. It says www.marcusturnerjr.com. Yes. So your family, uh, they are all involved in this campaign? Yes. So everybody's involved. Uh, I got people texting me right now. Hey, you need to uh, bring me five signs. I just call, talked to five people who said bring it. My sister called me the other day. I need eight signs. So I'm constantly ordering signs. This is my first time out. I didn't know that you can just order a thousand signs and be done with it. So I've constantly been going back and forth to get the signs and bringing them back out. But I'm just so honored to have so much support in the community. I mean, it's really just incredible to see uh, that I'm finally here. I'm finally ready to serve, and people are actually supporting me. Okay. Yes. If we get ready to go to a closing on this, uh, again, I'd like to thank you for coming on the uh, radio podcast. I want everyone to share this as well. Uh, uh, this radio show, as I've often said, loved by many, hated by few, mm -hmm. respected by all, was second to none. We want you to continue to share this and also follow us on YouTube. Ed Gray, the Commission Radio. You got a YouTube channel as well? Uh, I don't have a YouTube channel. Okay. So we got to get you that Roku and, yeah. and uh, you know, get you involved in that. And you, what other social media do you have? So I got Facebook. Facebook, Marcus Turner Jr. I got Instagram, Marcus underscore Turner underscore Jr. And that's it. That's it? That's cool. how you can contact me. But as we go to a close, tell us why we should uh, elect you to uh, be the Dallas County Clerk. Uh, everybody, I'm Marcus Turner Jr. I'm the hometown choice from DeSoto, Texas. Uh, still invested in the, com the community. Uh, working for the DFW Metro NAACP. Uh, investing in my education at the University of North Texas. Uh, studying public leadership. I've served the citizens of Dallas County the last 10 years and earned the moniker Mr. Dallas County for how hard and how engaged I served the citizens 
what I'm looking to do is bring you more access and more education on the county clerk's office. If you're listening to this message now, I want you to ask yourself three questions. Do you know how to e-file? Do you know where to file a DBA at? Or if I told you to go get a marriage license in the next 10 minutes, would you know where to go? If you don't, follow my campaign because those are the type of things I'm educating the public on when I am the next Dallas County Clerk. I want to appreciate you. In advance for going in that poll and going no further than number one. <laughs> well, when it comes to going no further than number one, you know this show is number one. Loved by many, hated by few, respected by all. We're second to none. So thank you for tuning in to the Commission Radio Show. And we will be back tomorrow. Yep, I retired, <laughs> but I never retired from being me. So see me tomorrow right back here on Facebook Live, Instagram, YouTube, and yeah, in your hearts, Ed Gray, the Commission Radio Show. See you tomorrow. Hello, this is Chris Howe, the Chris Howe Foundation, and the founder of In the Huddle with Chris Howe. You know, I really enjoy listening to Ed Gray right here on the Commission Radio Show. If you need empowerment, you need encouragement, and you need information that's going to help you to move to the next level, then you need to listen to the Commission Radio Show right here.